just kidding. I'm totally kidding. Yeah, welcome to the final episode of 2018 for Film in Minnesota. Goodbye, 2018. Goodbye. But hello to our listeners. Thanks yeah. for listening to this final final episode of the year. We appreciate the final you tuning cut. in. The final one. I don't know about the final <clears throat> cut. We're gonna have to edit. No, <laughs> gonna, you know I don't edit these. I'm gonna so. be I'm gonna be awkward. I'm gonna ramble. I'm gonna swear. I'm gonna get weird. Yeah. <laughs> so my friend just texted me. Just got the new Galaxy 9S phone, and now I don't know how to use my phone. <laughs> what? How? He took forever to go to a uh, smartphone, so... Okay. He doesn't like... So he just gave up his razor. Like, right. Like, <laughs> right, this week. Right. He's He's not technologically... Okay. advanced he's like where are the buttons <laughs> why do i see my face yeah it's it's <laughs> it's probably one of those just like the iphone x right it's just like where is the button honestly i so i had an android for the longest time um like i had the google one the first google phone that came out that was like the the, the slide one. yeah i don't think it was called the google one but it was the first google phone so it was like really thick oh which was completely unnecessary and it like slid up so you had the whole keyboard there oh yeah yeah i okay, i loved that phone until it died on me after like nine months but was um, it like the sidekick or something or? it was similar okay. yeah similar to that and uh so I had that and then I had like the LG something and, but everything had the buttons. Everything had buttons. You had like the back button and the home button and then the close button or something. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to transition because those phones kept dying on me after a year, but you have a two year contract. And so I was like, well now I'm stuck with refurbished phones for a year. They keep dying. And so I finally transitioned to an iPhone. Um, which for the record has held up phenomenally, but good. Um, it, I struggled. Like I was mad about it for Do a you long time. Do you want to put that on mute? Yeah. I just, <laughs> for a long time, <laughs> um, because it only has one button. I was like, where's my back button? Where's my home button? Where's my everything button? Oh. Where's my clothes button? Because that is like a Blackberry. You're, yeah. <laughs> you've been, I was struggling. Um, I mean, yeah. I got to figure it out. Yeah. I really like it now, but the keyboard can be anywhere as long as it works. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I totally get it. I feel for you, Ellen's friend, mm -hmm. but you can make it. It's going to be a fantastic choice in your life. <laughs> I, I don't I mean, get I don't know about though. the Samsung aspect, yeah, I, but the I, rest I, of it, the smartphone <sighs> part. I, why upgrade he had a smartphone this time around but it was just kind of like well mm -hmm. why would you buy something you don't know what you're doing <laughs> don't you test it you know no i'll just buy the new thing because it's the new I thing mean, i mean i mean yeah. why not somebody has to yeah I, I only do it because apple know. forces you to with their whole upgrade system it's like oh your phone really won't work for like <laughs> making a right. call let's say i know somebody <laughs> recently told me i don't remember who told me that they have like an iphone 6 or something and i was like damn like mm. that is gonna just not work one day yeah out of the software, nowhere yeah yeah i'm surprised that it so still don't up, does don't but don't upgrade it or update it yeah no yeah it's so like you're just gonna go and try and use your phone one day you're mm. gonna get a flat tire and you're gonna be like son of a bitch this isn't working <laughs> anymore <laughs> emergency call right i need a tow truck and i need you to bring me to apple right sorry now. <laughs> you need to update your phone before you make an emergency right. call <laughs> sorry it doesn't oh, work man. like that so, so yeah what has your year been since no one ever asks us i mean what's up with that right <laughs> we don't even matter uh, uh god 2018 2018 was busy um 2018 was super busy for me uh school i graduate in six months you guys i'm i can't even begin to explain how excited i am oh my gosh um finally but yeah so uh school so much school um i you voted i voted <laughs> and i no joke okay so i have never been I'm, I'm one of those people like presidential elections yes i'm in i vote every year or well every you know time around mm -hmm. um but I've never voted in the midterms before. I've never even considered voting in the midterms before. It never occurred to me before. <laughs> but no joke, like what? this year, I like I convinced, as far as I know, at least three people to vote. Because mm -hmm. I was like, it is so unbelievably important. 
right now but i mean in general midterms yes we should all vote i'm going to continue <laughs> doing that don't think that you this is like a one time yes to midterm yeah. yes but um i was i was very passionate about it when i did not expect to be hmm. and so i was excited to go vote i did vote um i was both happy and disappointed in a lot of the election results nationally um but I'm I'm really glad that I I uh, participated. Yeah, and yeah, good. It was really good. Minnesota is again the number one state for voter turnout. Yeah, this year, which I think is amazing. From eighteen to sixteen to fourteen, it's mm-hmm. at least the recent ones. So yeah, and I mean I it's for, well I mean not that we go around polling this with you know people that we know, but as far mm-hmm. as I know, I mean the majority of the people I know I think voted. Right. And I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Your civic duty. But people voted. What else yeah. did you do this year? Oh, gosh. What did I do? I don't know. Um, I worked three jobs and I exhausted myself. <laughs> I burnt myself out a couple times. Oh, no. Um, so I was, I was on, a, I was on a, a rise and then all of a sudden I'd plateau and I would just When was plummet. the plateau? Oh, God. There were a couple of them. One of them was like two weeks ago. Oh, no joke. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't function. Like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sleep. And I was just, I was completely useless to the world, which is great during midterms. Um, <laughs> and the midterm election and the midterm election. Yeah. It's <laughs> phenomenal. Um, what else did I do? I traveled. I got to go to oh. Athens, Greece, Ooh. which, um, when I was little, what? I used to be obsessed with, um, like ancient Greece and ancient Egypt. Okay. And so I was so excited to go there. It was amazing. Um, we were only there for two days and I'm not going to lie, having been so jet lagged, I slept, we slept for like the first day. So we really only were there yeah, for a day, yeah. but it's beautiful and it was, it was hot. I probably lost five pounds just walking because yeah. it was, we were climbing up the mountain, got lost at one point. Um, and it was Come like on, Egypt, probably like a hundred degrees, <laughs> right? But it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Um, it was amazing. And uh, and I got to go see my dad for the first time in his apartment that he's been in for like five years. Um, hmm. And so I was very excited to do that. I surprised him for his birthday. Hey, dad. <clears throat> um, and that was fun. And I got to go to Portland with my little sister so she could check out a school that she's now attending for dentistry. Go Elizabeth. I'm very proud of you. And I expect a lot of free dental work in the future. Uh, (laughs) But uh, yeah, so I got to, I got to do that. I got to travel a lot. I got to go to um, Missoula, Montana and Seattle which, okay, you give me that face when I say Montana, but mm-hmm. it was gorgeous. Like we flew into Kalispell and then rented a car and drove down to Missoula. <laughs> it was gorgeous. Uh-huh. It was seriously, absolutely into where? gorgeous. Kalispell. It's beautiful, <laughs> Alan. Okay, everyone listening to this, you should do exactly what I did and fly into Kalispell and drive down to Missoula. It's beautiful. <laughs> I don't know what that, where, anyway, it's where is that in relations to Billings? It's, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I do well, not you know are in Billings Montana. I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was so, it was beautiful. And I got to go to, um, a wedding there on a winery and it was lovely. And then I got to have wineries in Montana. Yeah. And it was lovely. seems odd. And their wine was delicious. (laughs) (laughs) So good. Um, and I got to go to a wedding in Seattle and it was so much fun being there. I love Seattle. I'm actually really excited to go back. Um, and yeah, so I got to travel a bunch. So that was really fun. And... Um, I started this super cool podcast with a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. So that, what's it called? Uh, ooh, good question. Shoot. Um, <laughs> you can get back to me. You don't yeah. have to. <laughs> but yeah, so we started this. I don't listen to podcasts. That was, yeah, podcasts are <laughs> lame. Just kidding. Please stay listening. Um, yeah, so it that, um, God, I feel like there's more and I'm not remembering. But yeah, it was just, it's just been such a busy a very busy year, but it's been a lot of fun. I've met so many new people both through this podcast and honestly, like traveling to, to the different places that I went to, um, Seattle, Montana, um, everywhere, like met so many new people, so many fantastic people, um, and made some new friends and, and yeah, it's been, it's been a really full and wonderful year. Well, good. 
How about you? What did you do? Um, I did a lot this year. Um, January produced the Z Fest film. February post production on (laughs) I don't know. Um, because we we started talking about doing this back in April. Yeah. So this this was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Then we launched, (laughs) (laughs) sort of in August. Sort of. Yeah. Well, that soft launch. The soft. <laughs> yeah. Soft lunch. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like soft lunch. You bring a soft lunch. Oh, lunch sounds so good right now. <laughs> Cold lunch or I'm whatever so they hungry, in guys. school. It's the story of my life. Okay. You having continue. a hot lunch? <laughs> I'm, I just want a lunch. <laughs> anyway, continue. Comes with a fruit cup and milk. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate milk. As long as it's chocolate milk. Yeah. That's all I care about. And in a cardboard box, you can drink out of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That you ruin when you try to open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they so never what else did you do? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. What happened in March? Well, I guess Z-Fest, that's when it happened. Or Z-Fest mm-hmm. did their thing. <laughs> <laughs> did their thing. And then it was feature time. Yeah. Oh, Your God. first feature. Yes. Alan, that's so exciting. It was a lot of firsts because it was like you gotta. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just getting tired of thinking about it because it, it's <laughs> not over. It's not over. Oh, it's not gonna be over for a while. Yeah, no. it's a lot of work. It's you gotta hang in there with to the bitter end, mm-hmm. it's like, or bittersweet if you get to a festival. So yeah, but um, so in April when we were talking, it was like. Hey, when I'm done doing this, yeah. <laughs> we can do the podcast. Yeah. Uh-uh. It's not going to happen at the time you think that it's going to happen. Right, right. Because the feature work filming went into an extra month. Well, maybe an extra two weeks because we were only shooting weekends. So mm-hmm. it was like maybe one or two days a week at that, if that. Mm-hmm. And I knew, I kind of knew it was going to go into long because I really didn't have much of a crew at all oh really so it was more experimental on the iphone well, which I is really cool that. though <laughs> yeah but yeah experimental i'll say that <laughs> there you go and nine actors um a few half a dozen locations if not more i guess i can't keep track mm-hmm. see that's that's the thing it just kept building mm-hmm. and then this was the one where all the music was already scored for it. Mm-hmm. So that part is there. And then now it's just piecing it together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. That's what editing's like. Yeah. I don't envy you on that. Like I props to all editors, honestly, cause that amazing. That is such a complicated and like complex yeah. job I, and this wow. one's called electric addiction so it circles around the whole fascination with our electronics yep. and phones and computers and <laughs> <laughs> the 30,000 different the iPhones the new note S, 9S, whatever right, yeah <laughs> the millions of options it's that like, we have well, now how do I use my phone? Right. I bought it but I don't know what to do <laughs> with it <laughs> I'll be paying it off over the next two years <laughs> there you go exactly. but uh then after the film, we did the podcast here, and then, yeah, like you were saying, we'll get into that a little bit about our guests that we've had on this mm-hmm. year so far. Um, we've had some amazing guests. Yeah. And then now we're ramping up into the new year where it's like, oh, we're going to yeah. make new stuff, but not until after a month worth of work. Oh, right, right. Getting out from under that mm-hmm. will be challenging enough. And then back into production for the next Z Fest round and the next. Right. You know, all, all these new guests we'll have on the show, too. I can't. I, I genuinely can't wait to be able to, like, participate in, like, Z Fest yeah. and all that. I well, cannot wait. Your release date is coming up soon here at the beginning of summer when everything explodes. That's right. the other thing. In April, when everything just, the weather turned, mm-hmm. everything flooded open. That's the other, oh yeah, that's what I did. I, I was, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Aside from making the feature, I also had to work my other job mm-hmm. <laughs> of the four that I already have, um, which was filming weddings. So yep. it was just kind of like, whoa, 
That's yeah. a lot more than I expected. No you kidding. Know. So if anybody's getting married, yeah, just cool. reach out to your local Film in Minnesota podcast co-host. There you go. <laughs> Alan Tracy. And I'll forward you to the right service. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but this last year has been, I've been, my focus was trying to focus on balance. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the more I tried to focus on it, the more it became less balanced. Yeah. Yeah. I fully agree. Yeah. I feel like I took on way more, bit off way more than I could chew. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just sitting here with a mouthful of work to, <laughs> that needs to be digested and, yeah. and able, in order to get to the next year. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh. It was, um, it was a good year, but it was definitely overwhelming in different moments. Yeah. And, uh, but I had time to yeah. like relax in between, it seems. But it, at the same time, I get anxious because it's like, mm-hmm. this isn't done yet. You need to get this done. Right. So, it's like your mind's just always going like, yeah. why are you relaxing? You have a thousand things to do. And when I spent, when I traveled to like Europe and France, people are just sitting around in cafes drinking coffee at night. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, what are you doing? It's time to go to bed so <laughs> you can get up and life. work the next day. <laughs> We should really all be living somewhere like that where you get like two hours in the middle of the day to go home and take a nap and then (laughs) you're revitalized for the rest of your day and you can really get things done and you're so productive. Two hours off in the middle of the day. Where is it? Somebody told me this could be completely incorrect. I did not check my sources on this. Um, But (laughs) I feel like it's in... Fake news, there it is. Right? Fake news. (laughs) Someone mentioned to me a long time ago in like Spain or Italy or somewhere over there... um, Mm -hmm in Europe that yeah they they do that so they have shorter days and you get a long like a couple hour break in the middle of the day and they call it something so you can literally get stuff done go home nap do whatever you need to do revitalize yourself continue working for the next few hours and then yeah (laughs) well that's weird because there's like at least in France some of their shops don't open until later like five I'm fine with that it's like what like They're I open for four hours and they close. How do they make money? <laughs> like, I I don't know, but they make it work. Why is the euro crashing? You wonder. I, shh. <laughs> Brexit, anyone? I mean, well, there's that. <laughs> well, anyways. But yeah. Speaking of being overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So we, I feel like this this podcast was a really good, a really good um, creation in this yeah. year. It was a good m- spot. Um, to kind of brighten the year. Yeah, I think, uh, I hope it'll go beyond a year. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully. <laughs> we have to make it to Labor Day. That's I mean, the thing. there's that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we've got a long ways to go. <laughs> yeah. So if my calculation, if we did it right, <laughs> you have, minus the special episode we had. Yep, yep. We typically have 52 weeks in a year. Half of that is, you know, basically like, 25 26 roughly so that's how many guests we'll have yeah. seen in a year come many, next september yep. our fiscal year yeah know. there we go <laughs> how many people will have met and gotten to know and learned about and hopefully i mean really connected with yeah um and hopefully others have learned something or at least maybe even beyond minnesota but yeah people who were from minnesota right and hopefully this i mean you know the point of this of the the podcast is really to promote not only film minnesota but the people here in the community um to connect people and you know we've had some amazing guests who do fantastic work so far and if even a few of them have been connected with others that are listening because of the awareness from this podcast, then I think that we're, you know, we're doing our job. Yeah. And well, that's huge. It's interesting because we had a lot of actors on. Um, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe one or two filmmakers, I guess. So for so mm-hmm. far. Um, and then we got a, we have a stunt man. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. And, and I think that ties in really well because we have so many actors who are actresses mm-hmm. more specifically who's like who stated that they would love to do some type of action film and have those, you know, 
right. action roles. And I think that's amazing. Having done a film where there was a little bit of choreographed, you know, work, stunt work, yeah. action work. Um, it's so much fun. And I would love to see some of the badass women that we interviewed um, Killing take it. on those roles. Yeah, because yeah. they absolutely could. And it would be amazing. So filmmakers listening, seriously, you've got some great actresses that want to do that kind of work. Call them. Yeah. Yeah. Reach Go out to that them. episode and yeah. reach in. Yeah. I, oh, there, <laughs> there goes that. And now Alan needs a new phone because he broke <laughs> it. Just throwing phones all over the place. I don't need a phone. <laughs> I don't want people to contact me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah. He's just done. The Freudian slip. Literally, it slipped out of my hand. Right. But um, <laughs> I guess some of the guests we've had, let's see here. I mean, I mean our first guest. Yeah, starting with Rachel. Yeah, who I think was a really great first guest. Yeah. I, I adore Rachel. Um, Me too. I've known her for a long time. And she's she, uh, I kind of look up to her, I guess you could say, um, when it comes to like just being an actor in the really? Twin Cities. I couldn't tell. Yeah, I, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I do. Like she's phenomenal um, in what she does. And... I mean, she even talked about how, because her and I kind of mentioned um, being an introvert and kind of having those moments where you, yeah. it, like networking is so difficult for some people. and But it's so necessary in this, in this business, yeah. you know, like, because it true. really is who you know and knowing everyone and just having your name out there and your face recognized and having people say, okay, well, this is who I want to work with. But if they don't know who you are, then they can't do that. Right. Um, and and she talked a lot about how she also struggles with that, with the networking aspect, but, um, you know, really takes time to, if she needs her, her personal moments, even if it's at, I think she mentioned a premiere of hers where she was in the very back and took a moment for herself, even though right. everybody was telling her to come join, you know, like if you need that moment, you need that moment and that's okay. And it can get overwhelming but if it's your passion you just have to go about it at at your pace and and allow yourself to take risks and and kind of extend yourself into you know not thinking of it as networking but thinking of it more as you know just <clears throat> meeting new people kind of like we're doing here and learning about them and letting them learn about you and just making friends and um and she's gone so far in in doing that yeah she's doing great work she is um she also said um uh, let's see well uh, she talked about like figuring out you know, what your passion is basically mm -hmm. focusing in on that and like talking about people who have maybe since been in acting or theater or film mm -hmm. and now they're doing something else. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I often wonder about that as like, uh, this year when I was doing like wedding work, it's just kind of like, well, that's, it wears on you. It really does. Yeah. If you're, not diligent about focusing on rebalancing, shifting the balance of things so that you don't get to that point. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that, that, that was kind of my realization this year too, is just kind of like there's, I, I took on a lot mm -hmm. and usually you take on one or two of those things maybe. Yeah. But, um, I think Rudy said it too. He he's like, <laughs> he's never done either, you know? Yeah. He's like, and when he got a job, he was talking about like, oh, no, no, no. Everyone has three or four jobs. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Which is funny because I, I literally like two years ago, I would have been like, there is no way that that's true. But today we're yeah. sitting here and it's like, oh, yeah, no, that I hear it. Like, I hear you. Yeah. Job you know? enlargement. Yeah. yeah. And he also pointed out, even with having all of that going on and being that busy, he always makes sure to pay himself first. Oh, yeah. You always pay yourself first. That's and that's true. so important. I think that plays a really large role in, in that balance, you know, like mm -hmm. if you have, 
you know, three jobs and a podcast and school and, you know, this and that and friends and Mm -hmm. family and all these things. You have to pay yourself first because if you do, then that your passion is being satisfied. Right. And you're finding that you have the ability to then put as a little bit into all of these other avenues. Whereas if you're doing all of those things, then you don't have time for yourself. And I feel like that really wears on you a lot more, um, at the end of the day and then at the end of a week and then at the end of a month and then all of a sudden at the end of a year, you didn't pay yourself at all and you're exhausted. And, and, and so I think that's when he said that, that really stuck with me. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. I know. Oh, Gabby's story. <laughs> Gabby was amazing. Oh. Gabby's story was fascinating. Unbelievable. Right? I mean, <laughs> like everything she went I, through. Decades yeah. away from acting. Decades. A lifetime, really. Yeah. Um, a when, whole generation of raising her daughter, her mm-hmm. kids. Her kids, yeah. And, <laughs> and then coming back to it like this. and Yeah. And doing I mean, a great job at it. Oh, absolutely. And she had mentioned like it because, or it took her that long to get back to it because it was that important to her because mm. it really is her passion and it means so much. And the idea of losing it again was too heartbreaking. Like right. it's too difficult. And so if she was going to do it again, she needed to do it at the right time and the right moment for her where she could really put into it. And that and she has and it's she's doing amazing and all thanks to film in minnesota itself right. not our podcast but no, in but general the actual <laughs> concept of film in minnesota yes yeah because it's like yeah i think about it and it's like is there film in iowa is there film in south dakota you know it's like i think about this a little bit because mm-hmm. we all know new york la chicago right all, all Atlanta. these places that have yeah. money but when it comes to the art it's not all about money. No. To quote a not so serious character from a film. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And her, the, even the stories she just told about like different adventures she has had in her life were just fascinating to me. She's amazing. Yeah. And everyone's looking for comedy as, or another genre. Oh, yeah. Literally every, I think everyone that we talked to was like, yeah, love comedy, want to do comedy. I need to do more comedy. Yeah. And it, it's still coming for 2019 or some of our future guests. Yep. Want to do comedy. We need more comedy in action in Minnesota films. And some rom-coms. We had a few of those Rom-com, comments too. Yeah. Rom-coms. We did. I, I just, I wish that I was a better writer and I would just write all these scripts. What's with rom-coms? But I'm not. Uh, they're wonderful. Like, and they make people feel what, good. What are some of the best rom-coms? I, I liked Love Crazy Actually. Rich Asians. I haven't seen that yet. I really want to see that. Oh, you should. I I want to. Um, Just buy it on iTunes. You're fine. Okay. You won't Uh, regret it. (laughs) (laughs) I believe you. Love Actually. I Mm -hmm. love, like that's, that and um, When Harry Met Sally, those are two that I could, I do, I have literally watched just dozens and dozens of times and I will never get sick of them. Hmm. Um, They're both hilarious and heartwarming and um, comforting kind of yeah they're they're excellent movies yeah rom-coms are fantastic i mean yes some of them are too cheesy and a little much and but Mm -hmm. but there are really good ones out there yeah the holiday the holiday i mean come on who doesn't why are you looking at me like you don't know what that is hey the I know I can't talk. Of movies this I know, year. I can't talk. I think every episode it was like you haven't seen this. I know. I'm just I'm the worst, quite literally. Um So you'll trade me the holiday for everything else. ET. <laughs> well, you saw that now. I haven't yet. What? I lent I'm, it to you. I know, I still have it. I was moving. Oh, I oh, moved. I moved this year. Uh-huh. I did that too. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've done all sorts of things. I, uh, forgot that whole moving thing, huh? I know. <laughs> I had a few hiccups with my vehicle that I had to figure out. Oh, um, but yeah. yeah, so I, I do, I do still have to watch it, but I'm going to. 
Okay. Um, You're forcing me to buy buy the Blu-ray now. You realize that? I'm so <laughs> You can keep sorry. Well, maybe I shouldn't say you should keep it because no. then you wouldn't ever watch it. it. Right. <laughs> and not only that, but I don't want to own it because the way he looks, the way E.T. looks still freaks me out. Freaks oh, me out as a kid and still on. freaks me out now. And I get that he's not a scary character and it's not a scary no. movie. And I fully understand that. But Your the child in me that had mm-hmm. nightmares about him is still kind of there. And I just, I don't want it to remain in my house forever. So that's all. It's, well, yeah. I just, know I can't. Not. <laughs> but I will watch it. I'm going to. Okay. But um, back to rom-coms. <laughs> rom-coms. Holiday. Those, Love actually. Harry yeah. Met Sally. When mm-hmm. Harry Met Sally. Excellent movies. And there are plenty more, but. Ooh, um, well, I don't know if that would be a, I mean, Breakfast at Tiffany's. I don't know if you would call it a rom-com. No, probably not. But it's. It is? <laughs> it's it's one of my favorite movies. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's, yeah. okay. If any of my friends are listening to this, and they're probably not, um, they're going to laugh when I say this, but it's easily in my top three favorite movies. Ooh, that's a good question. Actually, Alan, what are your top, let's say, three favorite movies of all time? Or top two. Top two favorite movies of all time. E.T. <laughs> what? Are you serious? <laughs> Son you, of a bitch. <laughs> you need to watch that I'm film. I'm sorry. I will. I will. I promise. Because that was my inspiration for film. So okay. I mean, we already went through that. Yes. But, I will watch um, it. So you have Breakfast at Tiffany's? Yeah. Is Breakfast at Tiffany's is one of them. Um, oh, and you didn't do the film challenge yet as as of right now when we we're recording this. I know. In November. Late I know, November. I know. I will. I'm <laughs> going to. I am going to. Okay. I am. Um your 10 day movie challenge begins now. Yeah. So breakfast <laughs> of Tiffany's, um, and the Godfather, the Godfather is my number one favorite. The movie. first one. Yeah. Okay. I would say the first one, I, you can combine one and two right. if you want, but yeah. Um, and then breakfast of Tiffany's is second. And then I would probably wow. say when Harry met Sally is third. That's a very diverse three here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the market scene. <laughs> the horse's head Fun, yeah phenomenal <laughs> uh, amazing filmmaking to breakfast at tiffany's <laughs> right i can't help it yeah. good films are good films right um and then from when harry met sally i would probably go one flew over the cuckoo's nest oh really yeah oh wow, okay that. so yeah very diverse films yeah We'll see. You can just post these up, you know. I one should. A day. I should. I literally just spouted them out. I might <laughs> yeah. as well. I'm like five days late, and I just <laughs> did my first four days right there. Yeah. But you, you. I asked you. So E. T. Uh huh. Number the two. The Matrix. Okay. I like the, the first one or all the trilogy. I like them all though. Okay. Yeah. All right. Number three. Um. I do like Three Hundred a lot. Ooh, yeah, it's a good movie. First one, very cinematic. A lot of actors I didn't know at the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't know Fassbender was in there. I was like, I, I know, back right? And I was like, oh, that is him. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. There are quite a few little cameos like that. Yeah. It's like, oh, or not cameos, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So action. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. All of Fincher's stuff, really. Yeah, like, that's understandable. Like Fight Club and. Amazing. The other one. <laughs> I'm the just kidding. The other one. <laughs> Easily his favorite, you guys. Yeah. The other ones. Yeah. <laughs> All of those. All of those movies. Uh, I liked uh, our little chat with Rod. I did too. Um, and just, you know. Bringing up, you know, the aspect of race and film, but especially here in Minnesota. Because mm-hmm. um, it's not something that will people really talk about right here and, and i thought it was very interesting getting his perspective on it yeah and he he identifies as mixed mm-hmm. uh and that's like who knew you right so I, right. you don't i knew kind of but well, you know knowing him yeah yeah yes but you know but like he said there are people that he'll meet and they just assume something right and they can be completely off or they can be partially right. But either way, they're not getting to know him. Yeah. As they're a, just making some big assumption. Right. And as a filmmaker, I feel like I've, um, in the past, I've, well, 
I guess that's not true, but I was going to say I have tend to whitewash my films too, but it's like I live in Minnesota. There's a lot of... <laughs> There's a lot not, of white people here. Yeah, um, that's one thing. When I was living in LA, I had a classroom with no white people. And so then I come phenomenal. back to Minnesota. And it's all... It's all white. And I, it, yeah. it freaked me out when I came back. I, I was believe like, it, yeah. I was in a room filled with all white it's people. Not, <laughs> it, like, it's not... <laughs> it's normal for here. It's not normal in general. Like... When you think about it, you think yeah. of the world. LA is not white. No. 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 Which is good. Yeah. But having said that, LA is not white, but so many Hollywood films are. Yes. The, and the like hills that are all right white. There, but <laughs> yes. That right there really shows why like the Time's Up movement and the, you know, all of these things are so important because... There are so many phenomenal actors and filmmakers and writers and cinematographers and all of this out there that are not white, that are not white men, mm-hmm. not white or men, um, that are not getting any any chance when yeah. they're, quite frankly, probably better choices for, yeah. for all of these roles in filmmaking. And I love that Crazy Rich Asians <laughs> rich, crazy, crazy rich yeah. in itself. Yes. And they made so much money on that movie. They really did. So much. Yeah. Weekends over weekends. It was like, oh. And it was like, like it got 100% on like every rating scale. Like everyone loved it. Yeah. Everyone. And obviously that, and they spoke English for the majority of the film. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like, okay, okay. Yeah. (laughs) And proper English at that. Oh, yeah. We say. But, um. It better was, English than a lot of white people. Yeah, better than me too. It's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did you, like as an Asian American, how did you feel like going to that movie and and watching it and and seeing like, I, how I was, great it was? I was almost like because I don't know anything about the book. I haven't read that or mm-hmm. anything. I want to now. Right. But um, after watching, I was while I was watching, I was kind of like thinking, all right, where's the white person? I'm right. waiting for the white person to show up and they never showed up. And it was great. <laughs> it was like, finally, something we don't need your help with right. and we can do it on our own. Yes. And it's like, they did it. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's true about some other films like, uh, well, I guess Black Klansman did have, obviously. Right. For obvious but, reasons. But, <laughs> right. but then you have like, I don't know, um, well, and even like Black like, Panther had. No, um, yeah, Black Panther was great. Except it was for amazing. The, it the did one have agent. That was it. Right. Yeah. The I mean, shoot. it did have him. Who I, I read some reviews where people were like, "You still kind of tried to have one white guy show up and like save everybody," but I guess it depends on how you watch it. Like I watched it, and I didn't think that was his role. Like I didn't. Right. I definitely right. did not see him as saving anything. Right. You know, like. And he seemed a very, and this is, I mean, I'm, I'm white, so this could just be um, me brushing it off, you know, which is entirely possible and just not realizing it. But I really did think that the focus and the positive messages from the African-American cast and African cast um, was, was really that they were, it was their world and they were saving it and the there was so much positivity there and like the female cast oh my gosh such badass women yeah. it was amazing and i loved it and seeing the incredible roles that were written for them um god i loved it i i absolutely loved it that film was incredible yeah yeah i, s- I saw blind spotting that's what it was called and that had like a black actor and a white actor mm-hmm. so in oakland um it was based in Oakland, the story, so. I know that I've. Yeah, it, it was oh. an indie release. I, like, I feel like I've heard of it, but maybe not. I'm yeah, not it sure. was pretty good. I liked it. Talked. It, it kind of dealt with the whole gentrification of mm-hmm. certain areas, so. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I thought that was a really. I, I liked what Tom was talking about with the IDI Yes. Thing. Yeah, I think that that's amazing and i'm so 
I'm really happy that that's like the intimacy directors and everything that that's like a thing. Yeah. And it's, and I really hope that that just continues to grow. But I, I didn't even think of that. That's Mm -hmm. amazing that someone, one thought of it and two implemented it. Yeah. And Um, within this, this time that we're all thinking, well, here are all these stories coming to light in the future. Then what, you know, it's kind of dot, dot, dot here. But and then he comes in and says, well, and this is what. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but even just to be aware of doing that for your actors as a filmmaker mm-hmm. helps me tremendously think about that for future if the scene calls for it. So Yeah, absolutely. I saw, I was watching an interview and now I can't remember who it was with, uh, some Hollywood actor. Um talking about a film that they had done or a couple films and the experience on one um, where they had sex scenes and how horrible it went. And they were, um, it it was really uncomfortable. There was like no respect for what was going on um, to the next one where they had something similar to that. And there was a lot of focus put on, okay, is it okay for me to touch you here? Is it okay for me to touch you there? What makes you comfortable? What makes you uncomfortable? Like, where do you want me to be, you know, like it, there was a lot more work in making sure that certain intimate scenes were okay for her rather than what did it look like? Like that, that was the way that she felt and her comfort level and whether she was okay with what was going on was first and foremost, like the important um, right. aspect. And I think that that's phenomenal. And I hope that there are um, more of those on film sets and it becomes just a, a required thing. Um, Cause I think even like locally, nationally, internationally, I think that that could honestly change the game. Right. And should. And I've, I watched a film called revenge about like basically revenge from rape mm-hmm. and basically a, attempted murder yeah. um but i love that they didn't sexualize it that was yeah. one thing that struck me right away it was just like oh she didn't the director's a woman so she she right. knew how to kind of th- it, it's a little hokey in places <laughs> i'll be well, honest this film is but, got some there's a moment just oh uh, they're like running around in circles and it's just like what is going on here? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it was just a little silly, but um, maybe that was to draw you out of the the intensity. Ten- yeah, or, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> and yeah. I thought it was just really well done. But I mean, I think about like past films I've done, and there have been sexual, both consensual and non-consensual scenes that I've had to film, mm-hmm. and I think about what Tom says, and it's just like, oh. I hope no one brought them that with them, you know, after right. like when he talked about not internalizing it and mm-hmm. where's your out. Yeah. Like this is it. Leave it on the stage or on set or whatever. And that's where it stays. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was like, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It does. Yeah. And just doing a check in like that is just like her making sure that's very important, I think, because you don't know when you walk away sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you communicate that. So. Right. Exactly. And in those situations, it can be really hard to communicate that. So having someone there to really facilitate it is is great. And what's your take on the whole Me Too movement, <laughs> too, or since we're um, on this right now? Right, right. So um, I... Oh, how to even go into it. I've done, I, I did one film um, of years ago now um, and worked with a filmmaker who I, uh, it was for like a, it was a competition film. Um, worked with a, a girl who I really like uh, even now, adore her, follow her and her travels and um, experiences in life and everything. Um, but my role, first of all, there was no real, she wasn't a character. Like she, I mean, there wasn't a lot of character development to be had because I was mainly just this newlywed wife who was supposed to just be making out with someone. 
in like every scene, which is fine. But that was it. Mm. And, um, you know, at the t- at times like that where you're, it's not comfortable. Um, right. Especially in, in the way that you're necessarily doing it. And I don't think he was comfortable and, and all of that. But, um, and, I, like I don't want to get into too much detail, but it didn't feel like it was acceptable to raise the fact that it, it's not comfortable. Um, whereas today, I feel like, and part of it I think is because maybe I'm older, um, maybe because of the Me Too movement and all of this has come out, and it's a, a topic of discussion now. Right. Um, and I'm just more comfortable with who I am, but. Uh, I think that it's it's good that we can have that conversation and say, I'm not comfortable with this. Can we change the way that we're doing this? Um, you know, not just for the film, but for your own personal, mm-hmm. you know, s- sanity kind of. Um, and that was, that was like a minor thing. Um, and knowing women that have been in this industry um, who have been, been in roles where they had to do more or had to be in a far more intimate uh, environment that they were not comfortable with and not being able to say something about it or or bring it up or question it right um it's it's really upsetting and because i mean this is it's not only your job um that you're potentially putting on the line, but it's your reputation because at that point, if you've upset the people that you're working for prior to all this going on, like who knows what message is actually going to then be sent out about you and you want to continue doing what you're doing. Right. Um, and you know, you're not easy to work with or you're not going to take direction or you're going to try and have too much input and change things. And, and that's not what, you know, that's not actually what's going on. Um, and then on top of it with, um, I know that Kendra had, had mentioned this a lot with getting messages from filmmakers and, and mm-hmm. photographers and things like that about roles and saying, hey, are you willing to do X or Y? Or I really want you for this role and this is why. And being um, very openly, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, um, just really bra- rash and like, rude and um completely inappropriate Mm -hmm. and it it makes it makes you feel really uncomfortable and at that point like I had that happen when I first started filming and it kind of uh when I first started acting in the cities um and it made me so uncomfortable that I kind of put things on pause for a while and didn't know I think that was that was a big portion of me not wanting to network or me not wanting to go to events and right. this and that and meet people because I was worried that that's just what it was like and that was something that you had to deal with until I then started taking classes from um, the amazing Cynthia and doing working with other people and meeting people in class and realizing that's not actually what it's like that's not normal mm-hmm. um but even so, it still makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. And and there's no reason there's no reason for that. And so the fact that there are um you know there's information out there about who some of those people, at least here in the Twin Cities, are, so you know who right. to kind of avoid and um and there are other people who are willing to listen. So if yeah. something like that happens, you can feel free to say, Hey, this is going on, this is what's happening to me, yeah. and other people have your back, which is amazing. And some of these things are still going on today that I've yeah. recently heard about and and they're still prominent people mm-hmm. in in many places, even like a film festival, mm-hmm. a local one. Yep. So I, I was just like, what do I do now, you right. know? And I, because I, I'm glad someone trusted me enough to tell me but now what, what can I do? I, I really don't know. I'm some, sometimes I'm at a loss of words and I talked to some other, uh, gal friends of mine that, mm-hmm. um, 
they they've been around a while they're, they're more in the writing side of things so they're not really um in production per se mm -hmm. but they've been around productions enough and they're a bit older and one of them said that you know it's she she asked me like is this an older gentleman and is like yes mm -hmm. and she's like yeah we've noticed that a lot of old men of a certain age have that yeah so it's just like oh okay so you know it's it is widely known and mm -hmm. I, I still wonder like what can i do i mean that's that's a tough place to be because one i don't want this to continue right but at the same time too i want to respect her privacy so like it's it's that line you know it's like you can't overstep your mm -hmm. bounds on someone else's personal stuff yeah so. i mean definitely not putting her you know her experiences and her business out there yeah but maybe Can't put just it on blast like that yeah but maybe more so letting networks know he is doing something i've seen a lot of of posts about this lately things about like when um when people talk about like sexual abuse and um sexual harassment and things like that saying like well he um oh the, it's it's the wording of it it's basically taking the taking it away from like saying this isn't something that she allowed to happen to right. her it's something he is doing to right. people like he did this um and making sure that because that's the message that we want to send is this person is doing something that they should not be doing to people like it does not matter who he what, i no. I take that back. It does matter. It matters who it's being done to, but um, it needs to be stopped on his end. Right. No, I get it. Because it's, yeah. like, it's like, I, I get what you're saying. Putting, it, you know, he has the power in that situation. We need to take it away from him and say, that's not okay. You're done. Yeah. You know, because it, it's only going to keep going. Yeah. And, that's, and then that's the issue. People who are in denial about it too. Yep. Yep. It just makes it worse because mm -hmm. it's like, that that's where that whole mentality of rationalization that like oh she was wearing something or oh he yeah had the you know it was just a joke or something right oh i hate that all line. those I was all just those joking rationalizations mm. for behavior yeah. that has gone unchecked unacceptable <laughs> yeah but yeah but yeah we had kendra on <laughs> and, <laughs> and she, she and about, she talked about that a lot and i thought that was great yeah and um she also talked about growing up her and Ryan both talked about growing up with parents that helped usher their passions forward. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which I thought was really cool. Right. And I, to an extent that was true in my childhood, but it was more like Megan's childhood where it was like your parents are more pragmatic mm -hmm. where it's like, Oh great! You can have any dream you want as long as it's one of these. You know, oh, funny. yeah. It's like yeah. as long as you can make money I'm right. doing this, pay your bills, and yeah, be a <laughs> contribution to society. <laughs> right? Yes. That's the matrix, right? Like you pay right. your taxes, you exactly. help your landlady out with her <laughs> garbage. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was, and I, I kind of related to, to Ryan and Kendra a little bit as well. Um, with that, like, I would not have gotten into acting or theater or film i shouldn't say wouldn't have i may not have mm -hmm. um if it weren't for my parents right because i was you know in elementary school and i was the kid i would like run and chase boys even though i was the one <laughs> girl in school they did not want to be chasing them um <laughs> but i would and i would like just I wouldn't pay attention in class and I like I got kicked out of gymnastics class because I was just goofing around and like gymnastics gymnastics yeah what? I I took gymnastics and I loved oh. it but I would just goof around and I wouldn't pay attention to what we were doing <laughs> half the time and so they were like chicks gotta go <laughs> and so um like I like I wouldn't pay attention I wouldn't focus on anything and I was sure. like I want to do my own thing and so my parents then decided to get me into acting and a theater and so like a couple of my classes did little mini productions of things like in the class um and so i like took place in that and they were like well maybe maybe she would focus on that and so my school my elementary school had like an actual like some big director or somebody come and they did like a theater program for a month or something in the summer yeah. and i did that and that's what got me into it and i became huh. obsessed with it um 
And so like if it weren't for them pushing me into that and saying, okay, we want you to try this, I I don't know that I would have found it. And then they really, they kept kind of um, supporting me, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, right. Yeah, especially my dad. Like he always he was always interested in, in me acting and, um, and he, he's kind of like that. Like he, he didn't do acting as a profession or anything, but he, he does voices. He does lots of voices. Um, and he's very theatrical and, um, comedic and he's just always trying to make people laugh and, and play a part and stuff, um, to entertain people. And I think I really got it from him. So I definitely related to them on that part where, it really, that helped to really push that passion, I think, and create it. Right. Just like they were saying. Yeah. Like, I definitely agree. My parents were supportive, but they mm-hmm. were, again, a lot like Megan's, where it was like <laughs> the Minnesota, like, hardworking. Yeah. Like, you got to earn your way. And yeah. they didn't really see this as earning your way. You know right. What I mean? Like, eh, I don't think this is a real job. Cause <laughs> they, don't, yeah. uh, they don't have open applications for it. Right, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there really is an application process for this. Yeah, that's so, not how it really goes. Yeah, you have to <laughs> yeah. make it, yeah. Right. And then, yeah, Megan also talked a lot about um, the fact that she doesn't really get to talk about this side of what she does. Yeah, um, and I don't all. think any of us do outside of networking events. Right. yeah. Which some don't, of us don't attend. Which, oh, oh. No, not you. But. Oh, that's what I thought you meant. I was like, oh, guilty. Um. Yeah, but I, I I liked her story too because I mean she does it, but she's also very okay with the fact that this is where she does it, and this yeah. is to the at the level that she does it, and she she loves it. She loves what she does here. Yeah, um, and I think about that. Like she reminds me a little bit of I had a friend pass away that I met in L.A. Right. Yeah, and it, it was just suddenly she was like maybe thirty eight and. Uh, she looked like she was in her twenties. I mean, mm-hmm. my God. Yeah. But she, she was just doing it, you know. And we worked worked together once on a web series, and it just reminds you, you know, you got to keep after your what you love to do, right? Otherwise, it'll be gone before you know it. Yeah. It's just like wow. I mean, what's the point if you're not loving what yeah, you do? Yeah, I, That's I think that thing. type of terror keeps me going. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, right. You know what? It could all be taken away in an instant, and it's yes. just like wow, okay, I didn't really get do anything because I let this take over or something. Right. Or like what my parents said about getting a job, you know, it's like. I know. It's hard to strike that type of balance when you're going for this type of goal. It, it really is. Because um, it's. I struggle with it. Yeah. It's like a straight path or it's like a zigzaggy, yeah. you know, maze. But yeah, yeah, I think the way she went about that was. Or the way she talked about that was great. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you progressed in the way you would have expected this <laughs> podcast to? Um, okay, this podcast. Thank God that's what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> I was going to say life. No. Uh, the podcast. We've been in um, existence for four months. Four months. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what kind of expectation I really had for it. Right. I was just excited to do it. Um, I was excited about the idea of doing a podcast um, again because I would love to get into talk radio after graduating, and so the idea of getting started and trying this out—I um, mean, it was a little scary. I was really nervous the first few episodes. You can go back and re-listen. I sound nervous, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know that I had any specific expectation. Um, I didn't know that anyone was going to listen to us. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that anyone was even going to want to be on the show. I honestly thought that I had this expectation that people were going to be a little more hesitant about coming on and being like, well, what is it about? How many other episodes have you done? Yeah, like, yeah. What? How long maybe have you I'll been wait. Doing this? Yeah. Like <laughs> maybe I'll hold off until you've been doing it for a while. <laughs> but um, yeah, everyone has really been Thank super you, Rachel. supportive. Thank you very Rachel, much. Rachel, you got us you off to an amazing start. Us. Big right? time. <laughs> we were like, we got this podcast and people were like, uh-huh. And we were like, we got Rachel Weber and they were like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. Um, but yeah, it, I think it's gone really well for, and I, I don't know anything yeah. about podcasts. Um, I listen to some of them. I, I don't know the logistics about it. So I don't know if 
if this is going well or not, to be honest. But <laughs> me neither. I I feel like it is. Yeah, it, it feels like we're in a positive direction. I yes. Guess. And I feel like we have people who listen, who pay attention, who care. And maybe it's just because they know the people that we're interviewing. Maybe it's because yeah. they know us. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Maybe it's just because they want to learn about it. And they're new to the film community here. And this is their way of learning about what's going on and about people and how other people have gotten into it. And so they're trying to gauge their best you know, sense of direction in diving into this community. Um, but either way, I feel like we've, we're in, yeah, like you said, we're in a positive direction and I'm loving doing this. Yeah. yeah. How about you? How do you think we've progressed since How starting? How have we progressed? <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, this is tough because mm-hmm. I think about like the podcasts in general that I listen to and, um, yeah, I do wonder if it's just, you know, they're listening for the guests. We'll know after this episode if it's... <laughs> <laughs> right? No one listens. No one's actually listening. I'm like, oh. My dad listened, that's all. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have four listeners, both our parents. Exactly. <laughs> Although my parents might listen to, to, to it together, <laughs> so it's just one. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Three. That's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess I, I'm not sure how I expected it to progress. Um, I, like you said, I just want to meet people. Right. Um, that's probably the best thing that we can get out of this as, uh, as my initial expectation at least. But you're going to video me on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Guys, I'm, I'm recording Alan on Instagram right now answering this question. I, I'm going to ramble about nothing. Well, that was a picture, so I didn't do anything. <laughs> Technology. I guess you don't know how to use your phone either, huh? Shut up. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> okay. I don't know what any of these are. Boomerang? <laughs> oh, I know what boomerang, boomerang is. And what is super zoom? Focus, re- hands free. Okay. Hands free. We can talk me. about this off the podcast. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Continue. Um, progressed. Yeah. Jeez. Well, we have another slew. We have enough to go for another three months at least. Right. <laughs> and and some of those are really good. Um, are they good? I'm just checking. <laughs> I'm checking in with you. Yeah, I think so. I learned a lot about people, about our yeah. guests. Yeah. What about you? I think so. I think I've learned a lot about our guests. <laughs> are you taping it now? <laughs> I am. I'm taping and now you're not saying anything. Okay. This is great. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to ask that. <laughs> uh, Delete. Right. Okay. So questions from our followers. Yeah, How about are, that? Yeah, let's um, do that. So I'm going to have you answer this one question um, because I, I genuinely don't know. Like I'm not the person to answer this question and maybe you aren't sure either. And we'll have to find someone to interview this year right, to shoot. really answer this. Um, <clears throat> so what's happening with financial incentives for filmmakers here in Minnesota? Well, we're still on a cash rebate program called Snowbait. So basically, when the money runs out, it's gone. <laughs> did you get it? I did. <laughs> okay. But um, I think we're at 20 or 25% depending on the uh, thing. But we really should get Melody from the film and TV board or whoever can come out and talk to us that'd be great so we can you know get some people involved with making money and but typically a lot of these i've noticed um they have a spreadsheet of the projects on their website of Mm mnfilmtv.org and it shows the last five-year run of like projects that have been in minnesota so I think there's uh, a lot to be done. Hopefully we get to a tax rebate because that's real money. That's where the real money is. Right. Because <laughs> cash rebate, uh, people, I I brought it up to some people in like, uh, I've been to like Cannes and they wonder like what's going on in Minnesota with film because they truly do not know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is there's not a, huge amount of money here at least 
within that you can cash in right away like canada or georgia or new york so their incentives are much higher of course but uh but then again canada has all the co-productions so they can have anyone from anywhere basically come <laughs> in and make money so right <laughs> or money back all right See, I would not have been able to answer that question. Yeah. Well, Andrew Peterson has, I think he's well versed in that. He's, I think he's still heading up Film North, formerly IFP. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he he would be a great guest to have on too. He, I think he would explain that a lot better. Um, plus, you, like, there's, you, you have to have a minimum of a hundred million, or uh, excuse me, one million to spend in this. I, I forget what the percentage of that is in the state but a million dollar budget at least. Mm -hmm. But yeah, cash rebate's a little trickier. A lot of people are kind of, when I mentioned cash rebate to them, they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, yeah. that doesn't mean anything enough to you? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, these are people who are dealing with like multi-million dollar projects and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. that's not enough. <laughs> right, right. I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> we want should. that tax money. Ugh, no kidding. But Hopefully, yeah. eventually. Well, that that's why it's important to vote during midterms. Right. So. Exactly. Ne um, next question. Yeah, next question, Alan. So how do you think films in Minnesota can be better and be seen outside of Minnesota? Be better? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jason asked us this. Jason, I think it, all these films are great. <laughs> I like your films. I was in one of Jason's films. We yeah, did a yeah. 48 film together. Jason's Wait. fun to work with. I like him. Which um, film? We did, oh, uh, was, um, now I'm not going to remember the name of it, and I'm a jerk. <laughs> Jason, don't listen to this. Um, Restraint, I think. Is oh, what it's was that called. black and white? Yes. Yes. It was a lot of fun. I didn't see um, you as it's well I was so it was a it was a short it was for I think the 48 um yeah. and the main guy Je, uh, who was played by Jesse Frank Frank it's, oh my god I don't remember how to yeah, pronounce his, his name? last name anyway Jesse who's who was super fun to work with um and is a great great actor um he without <laughs> giving too much away just kidding um he has some uh, mental issues in the film and keeps seeing situations happen, him reacting in a certain way, that, and that's not actually what's happening. So he's killing all these people in these different scenes, but he doesn't realize, but he's not actually killing them. And then in the end, he thinks he's seeing himself do this again, but really isn't, and then it turns out that he did. Um, anyway, so I, I play his sister. And who's like the one person that he does not envision killing? Because I mean, Jesse and I are pretty tight, so he yeah. didn't kill me. But yeah, it was a really fun movie to to film. Um, I loved the cast that we had, and uh, I loved working with Jason. Like it was, it was a really good. I was glad to be part of that forty eight. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, Jason, your films are great. And then what's the but, other half of the question? Oh, how can they be seen outside of Minnesota? Uh, you apply to other festivals. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, well, yeah, you really have to have a back-end budget, I think, for marketing and mm -hmm. travel, really, to go there if you're accepted. Yeah. So I, I've met people who, maybe they do a GoFundMe for that, but people who have moved their short film or whatever they're pitching the next project and so on to can. They they get it in there and then they just work it. You know, it's like they've planned to take one film this far. They didn't plan on doing eight Z fests and then nothing with them. You know, like they actually have a bigger plan. You know, in motion, and that's very inspire. It was inspiring to see because now looking back, seeing what they've done. It's been like a few years here, and uh, I think more people need to think about where are you taking this, you mm -hmm. know, and then take it there. Then right. really set up your plan for that. And I know a lot of people just want to make films, but 
you know, if you want to make a living at this, you have to do the business side too. Yeah. Which I don't think, I think when people are first, when they're young and spry and getting yeah. into this business, <laughs> that's not something they're thinking about. No, absolutely not. You know, they're not thinking, oh, these are the different aspects that I'm going to have to do when I'm actually finished making the film. Like, if this is what I want to do, the the job continues, you know, into, like you said, that business aspect. So he wants to know how they can be seen outside of Minnesota? Yeah. <laughs> Cliche, the internet. But, um... I mean, Facebook yeah. is cheap. You can advertise there. Just pick a festival. <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah, festivals, um... More yeah. networking. <laughs> right. Only yeah. online. Everything. Everything just comes down to networking, which is just, I mean, it's great, but certainly not everyone's <laughs> forte. <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. Not something everybody's great at, but yeah. So we're going to have more guests next year and more filmmakers even. Oh, uh, we are. Yeah. I think. We have more filmmakers than than actors, Um, at least for our first few shows yeah so far and a few people that have done feature work so yeah which is really interesting yeah just more and more people on the show mm -hmm. yeah i'm very excited about our lineup of guests for the first few first couple months at least so what what do you want to do in the new year for the podcast what Ooh, are some good thoughts question. some hopes and um i would like to I would like to go bigger with it. I would like to get more guests. Um, I, If we could end up doing an episode a week, I think that would be awesome. I think if we could do some type of live episode, that'd be cool. Actors Expo, Ooh, call us. What? Live episode. And we could just interview people as they come through. And I don't really know. Again, I don't actually know how podcasts work. So I don't know <laughs> how we would do a live episode, but we could. Um, but yeah, it, or maybe not live, but we could still do it there. have like a booth and interview people as they come through and, you know, meet people along the way. Um, I think thing like events would be really cool to, to bring the podcast to them to not only bring awareness about the podcast, but then bring awareness about more awareness about the, uh, the film community and the people within it. Um, to those that are listening and hopefully have a w even even wider range blah, 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 words. <laughs> I'm going to do this for a living, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have an even wider range of listeners uh, going f into the new year yeah. um, and throughout the new year. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Don't, stop laughing at no, me. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, you, see what I have you, to deal you with you guys. You had a joke. You had a joke. I liked it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for practicing on us. Our right? time here. <laughs> this is what I'm here for. And that's Rahana signing off. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. What What do you expect or I, hope I agree. for? I agree. I think one a week is kind of the norm for podcasts because uh, I don't know if we're losing listeners over two weeks. Right. Yeah. Or not. I don't I, know. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe they're just like, oh, is that still going on? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had one once. <laughs> <laughs> we already listened to that last month. Is yeah. it still happening? <laughs> oh, you're doing two a month. Oh, go okay. <laughs> we'll just check back at the end of the year when they're all done. <laughs> we'll just binge listen yeah, to yeah. all of them. <laughs> well, I guess if you're in traffic, you can listen to it. So there's Which one. Which you should because they're really interesting. Yeah. And this is the only one that you really have to listen to me and Alan like ramble on during. So <laughs> if you can make it through this, yeah. you can definitely make it through the others where you learn about fascinating people. Yeah. It'd be interesting to uh, go, go the Patreon route I've heard of, mm -hmm. which is people donate to the podcast so we can afford equipment and I don't know, studio space one day. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. Or so if anybody's looking to donate... Yeah. to this wonderful well, we project. We don't have a Patreon, so don't <laughs> don't encourage them now. I mean, we that's not the point. The point 
<laughs> Send us the money po- is the point. <laughs> the point that true, is, <laughs> point is, we need a f- fancier equipment. So <laughs> yeah, we need and more mics space. and more everything because right. we're getting more guests in. Exactly, and more some awesome of them guests. Want to come in two at a time? It's like, oh, you do. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Like, I remember okay. when we first started, we only had two mics. Yep. Now we have And we had three. no idea what we were doing. No idea. Nothing was going <laughs> Not right. We had to wait for like a half hour while we I were, tried to figure it out. Yep. We were, tried to use the headphones that weren't working and then they were and then they weren't and now I gave up and... <laughs> you don't use headphones. I, I don't even use when them. in a like, real whatever. studio, you would oh, use headphones. Oh, absolutely. And I would love to use headphones, but right now it throws me off. So <laughs> eventually we'll get there. Future guests, you will have headphones. Guests, guests, guests. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> That's exactly what it sounded yeah. like. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like we have come a long way when you point it out that way. Um, yeah. From our first recording, and <laughs> Rachel was, was such a trooper. And when it was just us two, it was just like, oh, we only have two mics, so you talk. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, we shared a mic. Like, who's going to answer the, or ask the next question? <laughs> Pass it back and forth. Yeah, we so, don't whip our hair back and forth. We pass the mic back and forth. I can't. what? What are you talking about? What? Hmm? I'm so disappointed right now. Um, Will Smith's daughter, Willow Smith, back like a decade ago or something, she had that one song called "I Whip My Hair Back and Forth." Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, now I'm sad that I know that. <laughs> since you don't, I apologize to our listeners for <laughs> that momentary lapse in judgment i guess i don't know something anyway moving on moving on to the end so we are always looking for more people to be on our show we love learning about you our um amazing film community Mm -hmm. individuals and uh and we want to you know have other people learn about you and about what you're doing how you got into this business what you hope to do in this business Um, Why are you doing this here as opposed to, you know, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, LA. So many people have mentioned LA. So yeah, it's, but they're still, they're still here. Yeah. And that's interesting to me. So yeah, if you want to be on this show, if you want to be interviewed, um, if you want to meet us, if you haven't already, and if you have, then you obviously clearly want to be on the show. You yeah, just yeah. haven't reached out yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, do so. I mean, we have our email. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. We do not have Twitter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I, um, that was my mistake. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Because I don't do Twitter anyway. So you you saved me. We locked our account out. So <laughs> they were like, okay, this says you're three months old. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I I don't like, understand how Twitter can allow some of the things that happen on Twitter to happen. <clears throat> yeah. But that it can't figure out that clearly that was just a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Like, they were like, well, what? if you're claiming to be less than a year old, right? we're not going to let you on our platform. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, Twitter, that's definitely what's So happening. now they need a driver's license or some sort of legal form right. or something. I'm not giving you my information. And I was like, Twitter. you know what, Twitter. Yeah, Eat we don't dust. we don't like Twitter anyway. <laughs> so we have Instagram, which is lovely, and Facebook, and our email address. So reach out, email us, um, call Ellen directly at. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, reach out to us like in any of those formats, and you know we we'll work with you on you know ma- being flexible um, <laughs> to record, and yeah. we just want to have you on and learn about you. And yeah, more more film stuff in teach Minnesota. About you. Hopefully up north in the warmer months. Yeah. We get to reach out to some people up there. but Absolutely. Yeah, because I have no idea what's going on in Duluth or the Iron Range. Oh, no clue. Other than what I see gets incentives for on mm-hmm. the film board right. website. Maybe someday we'll get Eric Stolhansky on too. Because yeah. he's on the film board. Oh, is he? Minnesota Film and T- TV yeah. board. Um, There's a lot of people on the board. Let's just and he's, <laughs> make that clear. He's the, well, there are a lot of people. But yeah, he's the, uh, what is it, Broken Lizard? What? Super Troopers. Oh. He's one of those guys. Broken. Oh, oh, oh I yeah. see, I see. Uh-huh. So that'd be pretty cool. 
from Minnesota, lives in Minnesota, loves Minnesota and film. Mm-hmm. You guys, we could do this. We get him on and then tell him all about all of your amazing projects. That's how we can get your projects seen outside of Minnesota. Yeah. And Bill, circle. Bill Murray. Bill Murray. <laughs> got to meet him the other day. That was phenomenal. Yeah. What he's was a, that he's like? He's a lovely man. Um, lovely, down to earth, uh, funny human being. And I would love to meet him again. <laughs> I also got to meet. I shouldn't say that. I didn't get to meet <laughs> Never mind. I'm not even the second person I'm not even gonna bring because yeah, I didn't get to meet him. I just like ran Good into film. him. Anyway, but yeah, I, I got to meet Bill Murray and it was wonderful. And he also has clearly a love for Minnesota. Um Which is weird. I don't know what in, his connection here would be. I mean, aside from the Saints. He owns the Saints, St. Saint Paul Saints. Oh, he owns them? He owns them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. He is Mr. St. Paul Saints. Oh. At oh. least as far as I know. Okay. Um, but yeah. So that is why that makes more sense yeah <laughs> so yeah um we'll we'll see if we can get him on the podcast if we get him on the podcast i'm just gonna die let's just put it that way like i'm just gonna see him and yeah we'll have to go to your place bill not ours <laughs> right yeah we'll bring him here um but yeah all right well yeah thanks everyone for listening uh yeah. this past year and it's been amazing helping us Gain, garner the general success we've had so far yeah and we're so glad that you're you know giving us this yeah, chance giving, and us, giving your us your time yeah um and we hope that you're learning more about not only the community but about other filmmakers and actors and what's going on and and you find it interesting if there's more that you would like us to talk about during our podcast yeah, send us questions let us know send us questions that we can answer on air if yeah. If we can. Right. Or that but we just can ask email other people. us or message or comment, whatever, you know, yeah. all the ways. Literally any feedback. Like we're looking to grow. And like Alan mentioned, this is really our first time ever doing this. Um, so, you know, we're beginners and you're our listeners. So help us out and let us know what we should do differently or add what we should add to the podcast well, or what questions. What you, no, <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> yeah. can't tell me what to do. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what questions we should ask, what you're interested in learning about when it comes to our guests, if you want to be our guest. And now Beauty and the Beast is just playing yeah, inside my I head. I was going to say, but, be our guest. <laughs> yeah, so reach out to us. We want to hear from you. And thank you so much for listening to us. You are the reason that we are here. Yeah. Well, with that, have a great end of the year, everyone. See you in 2019. Yeah, have a happy new year. Be safe, everybody. Bye.